Okay. I will call to order Wilsonville City Council meeting for December 7, 2020 at 7.05 p.m. and request a roll call, please. Councilor Linville? Here. Councilor West? Here. Council President Ackerville? Here. Councilor Lehan? Here. Mayor Knapp? Here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cosgrove, would you lead us on a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I will. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America and to, the, to Republic the Republic for which it stands, one nation, yeah. under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You're muted. There you go. How did I get muted? I'm open to a motion on order of agenda and uh, would remind the council that we uh, talked in work session about needing to uh, re uh, modify the consent agenda because of changes to the Kitakata rules. <laughs> Council President Ackerval. Your Honor, I move that we approve the order of agenda with the um, change that we remove resolution number 2863 from the consent agenda and make it new business item D. Thank you. Is there a second? Your Honor, I second the motion. Second by Councilor Linville. Thank you. All in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Aye. One, two, five. Passes unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, in there's business, we have uh, a couple of little things here. Uh, Marilac uh, Fitzgerald and I have been interviewing uh, a, a substantial number of people, uh, something over two dozen, and uh, we are working on uh, pulling together recommendations, which we will have for next council meeting. Uh, for tonight, uh, I believe you have received some word that uh, one of our uh, development review board panelists, Jean Svadlenka, would like to uh, serve a second term and uh, we would be pleased to have her uh, in that capacity. Uh, we are going to have a significant number of <clears throat> uh, new appointees to DRBs and it's important that we have some uh, continuity from people that have been there a while, so I'm pleased to see this, and I recommend to you the reappointment of Jean Svadlenka for DRB, DRB Review Board Panel A, if I could, please. Um, is there a motion? Motion to I think Kim sent this out late this afternoon. Uh, Council President Ackerball. <laughs> That. I move to ratify the reappointment um, of Jean Svedlenka um, to the Development Review Board Panel A for a term January 1st, 2021 to December 31st, 2022. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Linville, second. Thank you. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Raise your hands. Aye. Aye. We have unanimous five votes. Thank you very much. Appreciate that and appreciate uh, uh, Lenka's willingness to serve another term in that capacity. Uh, in terms of meetings, uh, here we are in the midst of the COVID and uh, the, the uh, winter coming on us. And uh, in spite of that, or maybe because of that, I'm involved in a lot of meetings. Uh, November, November 16th, we had a uh, Washington County Coordinating Committee meeting and had quite a bit of discussion about the transition in elected officials, which is uh, happening in many of our cities. Um, also that day had a mayor's, chairs, and city managers meeting with Washington County people. 
Uh, on the 18th of November, we had the uh, C4 Metro Subcommittee meeting where we were talking about issues shortly to come up before JPAC. Uh, these include the work being done on the new proposal for the interstate bridge between Washington and Oregon uh, to be uh, moved forward and how that process is gonna work. We had, uh, we talked about the MPAC process a little bit, which is uh, the Metropolitan Policy Advisory Committee, which uh, I'm not a member of, but uh, the uh, cities of Clackamas County is represented at that uh, table and uh, that group does uh, review a fair number of land use kinds of things. And they're kind of engaged in an interesting discussion right now about how relevant their work is and how much impact they're having. And some members would like to have uh, more relevance and more impact. So that'll be interesting to see how that comes out. Um, on the 19th, I started with JPAC at 7.30 in the morning. Uh, the topics that are being worked on right now is how the Metropolitan Transportation Improvement Program uh, projects are going to be uh, funded for the upcoming cycle, which is 2020, one through 2024, and uh, that is, it seems like it's a little ways out there, but uh, not, I think I may have that wrong. I think actually they're working on the cycle that's after that, which is 2024 to 2027, which is way out there. Uh, the discussion at this point is about the, how much of the funds to utilize for fixing the roads that we've got, how much for non-motor vehicle safety and enhancements to our roadway system and how much for alternative uh, modes like facilities for bicycles and pedestrians that could be created that we don't have currently at all. So uh, that whole discussion is going on and will eventually uh, uh, flow in. Decisions are made about where the money goes. Um, between November 21st and December 3rd, Ms. Fitzgerald and I spent six solid days of interviews, which ranged from uh, a couple hours to <laughs> three or four hours each each round. I don't know. We had a lot of a lot of very capable folks applying for jobs uh, as citizen volunteers on our panels, and we will come back to you with those recommendations next time. I'm pleased to be able to to have the the uh, great range of people applying that we do uh, at this point in time. Um, upcoming, I've got JPAC meeting uh, on the um, 11th. We have a Clackamas County Mayors and Chairs meeting then on the 16th. We have the C4 Metro Committee on the um, I'm going backwards, I guess, on my dates. On the 14th, we've got Washington County Coordinating Committee meeting. On the 9th, I have Metropolitan Mayors Consortium and Greater Portland, Inc. Economic Development. And tomorrow night, we have our first listening session for develop, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion at 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock. And I'm told that all of us uh, on council intend to be there. I'm very pleased to, to hear that. Uh, Marilek uh, Fitzgerald will be participating and we will have other uh, members of our community also. So that will be an interesting uh, first step into some more concrete uh, discussion about those issues within our community. So uh, hardly anything going on for the mayor. I hope that, that Julie is <laughs> equally engaged and uh, I'm sure she will be and uh, we will see how that goes. <clears throat> So uh, next thing up we have is uh, formal communications. We don't have any listed on the agenda. Did anything pop up late that needs to be done under, under communications? No, sir. All right, none of that. That brings us then to citizens input and community announcements, which is an opportunity for visitors to address council on things that are not on the agenda. Also a time to address items that are on the agenda, but not scheduled for public hearing. Staff and council make every effort to respond to questions raised during citizens input, either before tonight's meeting ends or quickly as possible thereafter. We do ask you that you contain your comments to about three minutes. And if you would like to 
use your raise hand feature on Zoom to let us know if you are there to provide comment. Do we have anyone that would like to provide public comment? Sorry, Mayor, all that was in vain. We have no public comment tonight. I know, but I still need to ask about it. So. <laughs> all right, uh, then I would be pleased to hear uh, comments and liaison reports from Council, starting with Council President Ackerville. Thank you. Um, the first thing that I wanted to mention tonight is um, some information that I, I recently became um, aware of and wanted to introduce it to the rest of council and to our community. And that is um, some additional resources, I um, guess, uh, around the area of mental health for our community members. And um, there is a website um, www.gettrainedtohelp.com um, that you can go to and actually sign up for training on how to provide immediate support, um, referral for somebody that's in distress. And um, I thought it was a very positive thing that, that that training is available to people within our community, as I know there is needs, and um, as well as, of course, a multitude of resources and links um, that can be found um, in our county um, on their webpage, www.clackamas.us slash mental health connection. And those resources are for um, people that are maybe in crisis themselves or if you know somebody that may be in crisis or also just generally need support, um, may not be in crisis, but may just generally need support. So I wanted to remind people um, of those resources. And then I wanted to call attention to a couple events that are not in our packet but are coming up here in the next two weeks. Um, as Mayor Knapp said, it's a busy time. There's lots going on. And um, the first event I wanted to call out was um, actually on the 9th, and that is a film uh, that's going to be shown by our library for the um, film, The Library That Dolly Built, and that's at 4 p.m. You can access it through, I believe, the Facebook Live um, feature for our library. And it is about the Imagination Library program, which, of course, Wilsonville uh, is able to participate in, and that is a fabulous program where children in our city birth through age five, receive a free book every month after registering in the program. Um, usually in the month of November, this in the fall time, there is a um, wine tasting that's held at the library. And of course, with COVID, we, we did not, um, could not attend the wine tasting at the library this year, but that's an opportunity where people can learn more about the Imagination Library and how to support Imagination Library as well. Um, and so if you're looking for information, you can um, watch this film on the, the 9th of this month. And of course, the library staff is always um, interested in getting people connected to that program. Also, I wanted to mention that at the end of this week, Hanukkah um, begins, and um, there are many holiday events that are happening. Um, and if you head to our Parks and Rec webpage, you can see their Winterfest schedule of activities, um, which includes the Fill the Stocking event, which is wrapping up very soon, the toy drive, um, a scavenger hunt, um, snowflake wishes. I thought that was a that's a cool one that's kind of going through the end of the year. Um, there's a cookie contest. There's many letters to Santa. There's many different activities going on, um, and so be sure to check that out and look for some ways that you can add to your festivities in a safe and fun way um, this month. And then um, we have an event coming up next week. And that is on December 15th. And between 4 and 6 p.m., there is a, um, a drive-by thank you event at the Wilsonville Community Center for our mayor. And Mayor Knapp is completing his term this month. 
and he has given many, many years of valuable service to our city. And it is hard to detail all that he has given to our community um, and express all of our gratitude completely. Um, but you know, Mayor Knapp has shown up for Wilsonville so many times. And this is an opportunity for us to show up for Mayor Knapp um, and show our appreciation. So I wanted to make sure that people knew about that date on the 15th from 4 to 6 p.m. And, um, you know, I'm going to invoke my council president privilege and request um, that one of my fellow council members make a motion um, to declare Tuesday, December 15th, 2020, as Mayor Knapp um, Appreciation Day in the city of Wilsonville. And once I have a motion and a second, then I will read a formal proclamation into the record. Just need that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Your Honor, I move to make uh, December 15th. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Knapp Appreciation Day. Um, start, why didn't you say a starting date? Starting this year, 2020? 2020. 2020. December 15th, 2020. Uh, end to end, well, indefinitely. <laughs> Second. I don't know if I need an end date, so indefinite. Second. Okay, with a, with a motion and a second, I would like to read the proclamation um, into the record. Whereas Tim Knapp began attending Development Review Board DRB meetings in 1999, before being appointed by the City Council to the DRB in January 2003, and whereas Tim Knapp was appointed to serve as a city councilor in December 2003, and whereas Tim Knapp was elected mayor in 2008, again in 2012, and again in 2016, and whereas the city council appointed Tim Knapp to serve for the past 12 years as the city's primary representative to several regional intergovernmental boards, including Clackamas County Coordinating Committee and the Metro Subcommittee and Washington County Coordinating Committee and Greater Portland Inc. Economic Development Organization. And whereas Tim Knapp was elected by the mayors of the cities of Clackamas County to serve over time as their representative to Metro Regional Government on numerous intergovernmental committees including Clackamas County, other small cities, representative to the Urban and Rural Reserves Steering Committee in 2008 to 2010 to advise on long-term land use and Clackamas County, other small cities representative to the Metropolitan Policy Advisory Committee, MPAC, from 2010 to 12 to advise on urban growth boundary land use issues and Clackamas County alternate and then representative to Metro's Joint Policy Advisory Committee on Transportation, JPAC, from 2012 to 2020. And whereas Tim Knapp was elected by mayors of the Greater Portland Metro Region to serve as committee chair or as their representative to several associations, including Metropolitan Mayors Consortium and Small Cities Consortium members representative to the Greater GPI Board of Directors. And whereas Tim Knapp actively lobbied federal and state officials on behalf of Wilsonville's interest to improve transportation options and public infrastructure by traveling to Washington, D.C., to meet with members of Congress and testify in Salem before the state legislature, and whereas Tim worked tirelessly to ensure that residents and employers of Wilsonville were considered when decisions were made locally, regionally, statewide, and federally. And now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Kristen Ockerval, City Council President, do hereby proclaim December 15th, 2020 as Mayor Tim Knapp Day.
in the city of Wilsonville to honor the 20 years of exemplary dedication and service he has given towards making Wilsonville community a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Wow, what do I say? Thank you. <laughs> uh, that's a surprise. Uh, yeah. Could, could, a while. Uh, Mayor, could I could I get the, uh, I think you should abstain, but could I get the rest of council to uh, vote in the affirmative that they wish oh. to do this before we move on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there was a motion and a second. Yes, unless you want to discuss, you should have your discussion. <laughs> you call for the vote. Yes, let's call for the vote. All in favor? Please show, Aye. raise hands. Aye. 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 Motion passes. I'll abstain for the record. Thanks. Okay, four um, in favor, one abstention, and zero nulls. Yeah. And Mayor Knapp, I'm usually very reluctant to uh, um, preempt my uh, elected officials on their uh, liaison reports. I would ask if you would suspend the normal operations here. We have... Uh, Done some outreach. I want to thank Zoe Monahan, who really took the lead on this. We've reached out to a lot of people that you've worked with over the last 17 years. And uh, the good news is, is that there were a ton of people that wanted to say a few words to you. The bad news is that there's a lot of people that wanted to say good things about you. So we have a video presentation that we would like to play right now uh, with your agreement. And uh, it's gonna take a little time to get through it. Some of us here in the council chamber um, are going to move to the back of the room so we don't have to crane our neck to look at the big screen. But if you would indulge us, we will set that video up and we will play that for your uh, viewing pleasure right now. All righty, thank you. <clears throat> It is truly an honor for me to be able to present and appreciate you in your final um, role here as mayor with the city of Wilsonville. Uh, I started with the city in 2007, and I think you were either the first um, elected official that I met. Uh, the city was deep into our planning process for the transit master plan, the park and rec master plan, and the bike pen master plan. And I remember spending countless hours with you um, as we comb through those plans, you ask tough questions of staff, uh, you challenged our assumptions, you looked at the plan from a different perspective, and provided a lot of insight and advice to us. And in the end, the plan was much better for it. It was that tenacity that I saw in you, your commitment to public service, to making a difference in this community, that I knew would carry you on into your role as mayor, and it certainly has. You've represented the city well at the regional level, the state level, the federal level, always fighting for this community, always doing what you thought was right. And for that, as a citizen, I thank you for it. You are a true public servant through and through. Your goal is to make a difference in this community, make a difference to the businesses here, those that live here, and those that work here. It has been a true honor to work with you it's been a true honor to live in this community and to be part of your success. I wish you all the best as you move forward in your life, to you and to Melody and on your next adventures. Thank you very much and best of luck. Mayor Knapp, Chris Namsu here. It dawned on me as I prepared for this video message that uh, I have 20 years of service to you in your capacity as an appointed and elected official. Uh, that's quite amazing. I, for one, am so incredibly proud of the work of the council over all of my 25 years at the city, but have particularly enjoyed the tremendous accomplishments that we have made together over your 12-year tenure as mayor and 17 years as a city councilor. Under your leadership, Wilsonville has responsibly grown from a sleepy farming community to a vibrant, thriving 21st century modern city with an amazing quality of life. Much of that success is due to your vision and leadership as mayor. Your accomplishments are far too many to list in this short video, but know that you have left an indelible mark on this wonderful community that will forever be recognized. For me, personally, I have enjoyed being challenged by you in many different ways and have to admit that your high expectations and uh, attention to detail have raised the bar for all of the staff in the Community Development Department, essentially making us all much better professionals. 
As Koloff once said, Wilsonville often punches above its weight in regional policy issues and in other areas. Our sphere of influence is large. Your dedication, your hard work, your diligent preparation and execution are significant reasons why Wilsonville has the reputation that it has. I, for one, again, am so very lucky to have been able to learn from you for many years. I do have to say, as a young planner, it was uh, always quite intimidating to know that the mayor was perhaps the most talented planner in the room at any given time. Uh, your care and passion for community are to be recognized. Uh, I value the time that we've been able to spend together and to work on projects and to accomplish things on behalf of the greater community. I think there's a silver lining to all of this and it, it has to do with the fact that you and Melody can now travel the globe. Uh, you can take long drives in your restored classic car, particularly on Monday evenings. And perhaps more, most importantly of all, you can uh, spend a lot more quality time with those wonderful grandkids of yours. I look forward to working with you in the future and know that the future will be bright in everything that you do. So thank you. You probably never dreamt that you would be ending your term during a pandemic. But here we are, recording this all by video. The last few months have been hard, but they have also reminded us so much how important our home is and what is around us in our community. And we live in an incredible community. We have beautiful parks, welcoming neighborhoods, clean streets, uh, quality water, and services that value people. This is home. And Mayor Knapp, you have given so much to help make this city the place that it is today. The number of hours you have put in surpasses what I think most of us can aggregate or even imagine. And I know that you care so much about this community. You care deeply. And that is what has demanded all those many, many hours of service. And you believe this place is worth deep thought careful planning and courageous vision and you have given all of that to us thank you so much mayor knapp tim <laughs> you and i have been in the trenches together for a long time going clear back to when i was just on the tigard city council you were on the wilsonville council and uh, we've seen each other in a lot of different settings and we've dealt with a lot of different issues together I just want to take this time to congratulate you on your retirement. As you may know, I'm retiring as well. So we're kind of riding off into the sunset together, the two of us. And the uh, city of Wilsonville has certainly grown and prospered under your leadership. And I think you can be very proud of that, looking back on all that you've achieved. And I hope that as you go forward, I know you'll have lots of other things to do I've heard from so many different people that once they retire, they're more busy than they were when they were working. And I know that you have a lot of other interests, and so I'm sure you'll keep busy in doing all of those other things. Maybe you and I will bump into each other at a car rally or on a golf course or something, who knows. But best wishes for the future to you and congratulations on a long and successful career. I've had the pleasure of knowing and working with Tim Knapp since 2003, when I served as Executive Director of the Wilsonville Chamber of Commerce. Tim was the incoming President-elect of the Chamber when he was appointed to serve on the Wilsonville City Council in 2003. At that time, both the Chamber Board and the City Council agreed that a City Council member should not serve as a Chamber Executive Officer due to potential real or perceived conflicts of interest. My opportunity to work closer with Tim came when I was hired in 2008 by the city manager to serve as public and government affairs director, and Tim was elected mayor in 2009. Since that time, I have seen Tim Knapp grow into his, his position as mayor, elevating Wilsonville across the region and the state in influence. Tim's evolution as mayor started with complete speeches pre-composed, and then moved to bulleted talking points, and then to the point where even talking points were no longer needed. Tim is a real leader who listens well, reads meeting materials in advance, and is willing to engage in in-depth policy discussions. I have witnessed other regional elected officials sit up and pay attention when Tim speaks. As a lobbyist, there is no more powerful tool in your arsenal than to break out your mayor, especially if your mayor is highly intelligent, articulate, and quick thinking on his feet, as Tim has shown. 
Wilsonville is blessed to be served in recent decades by mayors who understand the key core public policy issues and are able to articulate the values and benefits of these policies to constituents and other elected representatives. It has been my pleasure to serve a mayor and city council who can constantly demonstrate practical, non-ideological solutions to key public policy issues. Thank you. So, hi Tim. I want to thank you for all the work you've done for the city over the years, the decades actually. You've been so involved for so long. And uh, I personally want to thank you because I think you leave Wilsonville in just stellar shape. You're, the legacy you leave behind and our quality of life here um, is unmatched. As the community surveys have shown, our ratings are so high, especially this past spring. Um, we've been doing that for several years and they just keep getting better. And that's your leadership that did that. And so I wanna personally thank you for creating such a wonderful city for all of us. And on top of that, I know you'll have time on your hands. I hope you stay engaged in regional work and maybe with the city as well. But also, I look forward to stopping by your shop over on Boone's Ferry Road and just dinking around, chatting a little bit with you and uh, seeing what projects you've got going in the shop. It's always a fun place for me to be and uh, I like poking around in the shelves at all the old junk you have. So good luck to you and uh, I wish you the best. I'll see you around town. Thanks, bye. Hi, I'm Steve Calloway. And I first met Tim on June 15th, 2003. It's a day when a group of us from Hillsborough came down to look at Villa Bois. I was on the city council then, and it was an opportunity for me to learn the possibilities of South Hillsborough based on the realities of Villa Bois. I also learned that day that Tim is engaged, he's knowledgeable, he's smart, He's fiercely proud of his city, but he's also willing to share the successes of his city as a problem solver throughout the region. Now, a few years ago, I was elected mayor of Hillsborough, and since I became mayor, I've discovered that what I learned about Tim that day is how Tim operates every day as a mayor, with knowledge, intelligence, with passion for his community, affection, and also a regional leader who's willing to share in problem solving. So thank you, Tim, for being a good friend. Thank you for being a resource to all of our cities. And thank you especially for leading with integrity. And I want you to know that I uh, have a little gift for you from the city of Hillsborough. And so if this part of the videotape gets edited off, then you know you're not getting your gift. But thanks again for everything. Take care, and I wish you all the very best. Okay, Tim, I have served on the city council with you on and off for um, a long time, since 2003. And um, I have to admit that the first time when you came on as a, uh, as an, uh, when the first time you applied, uh, I was not all that excited about it. But uh, the second time you applied, uh, I had gotten more accustomed to the notion of having you on, uh, on the city council. And of course, it's uh, never been the same since then. So uh, you have given way more time than anyone I have ever served with. And, uh, and of course, we changed positions several, uh, not several times, but twice, when uh, I was mayor and you were a counselor, and then you were mayor and I was a counselor. So uh, we've served in different roles, but, uh, but you have always outdone every other counselor I've worked with in the last 20 years in terms of your time commitment to the job and your time commitment to this community. Um, it has been uh, a pleasure to work with you at least most all of the time. Um, I would have to say that um, no one would ever accuse you of cutting a meeting short, and, uh, and, uh, but when our meetings have tended to run long, it has almost always been because 
uh, you would err on the side of getting full information to the public. So you've always run a transparent city council and, uh, and explained things in, shall we say, detail uh, <laughs> so that the public would be more uh, uh, comprehending of what was going on. And, uh, um, and so that is, uh, that is um, something that not all um, politicians ha do uh, generally, but you have, you have done a, a great job of that. So it has been a pleasure serving with you and uh, you deserve a lot of credit for the, all of the time and effort you have given to the city council, to the communities, the cities in the region that you have worked with so much and, um, and served on behalf of our community. So thank you for all your service to the community and the future of Wilsonville. I just wanna say thank you for your service, Tim. It's been great working with you over these last years. And I've always appreciated that you would ask the tough questions. Good luck in your next adventures. You know, I think back to uh, you know my first my first really encounter with uh, with Mayor Knapp uh, would probably have to have been uh, around April of 2017. I had just arrived in February of 2017. In April of 2017, I found myself uh, traveling from uh, Wilsonville to uh, Washington, D.C. It's an annual trip that the mayor and uh, a few others have taken, including the transit director. So being the new transit director, I was off to Washington, D.C. And I can tell you that uh, that experience, just for those three or four days that we were in D.C., pretty much told me everything I needed to know about uh, Mayor Knapp. Um, what I saw was a, a gentleman that was capable of of building bridges. And I mentioned this to a colleague recently, if, if I was asked to describe a Mayor Knapp, I would call him a, a bridge builder. And not in the true sense of the word. Uh, uh, certainly uh, we have bridges throughout uh, the uh, greater Portland area, but I'm talking about a, a bridge builder of consensus, a bridge builder of, of men and women. Uh, as I've uh, watched him build bridges between Wilsonville and Washington, D.C. I've watched him build the, those same bridges between Wilsonville and Washington County, Wilsonville and Clackamas County. I've had the honor, the pleasure of watching uh, this incredible gentleman, this selfless, selfless uh, gentleman uh, fight for uh, everything as it relates to Wilsonville. Never backing down, never willing to take anything less than what is owed uh, to the city of Wilsonville. And I can tell you that over a very short period of time, um, I think I have developed that same uh, uh, nap, uh, you know, go to it, stick to itiveness that uh, Mayor Knapp has. And so I fight those fights as strong as I can because I've learned from one of the best. And I can tell you that his departure uh, from uh, my life as it relates to being transit director in, in the city of Wilsonville. There's going to be a void there. Uh, he has some extremely, extremely large shoes to fill. And so, um, though I am optimistic for the future, I am saddened by uh, his departure and what it will represent uh, for the city of Wilsonville. And, uh, you know, watching him serve on all of the different various committees and uh, me having a, a cheap seat in the back and watching uh, this. Uh, he's like a kind of a conductor of orchestras, if you will. And when he speaks, people listen. And uh, if, if I don't take anything else away from my experience with, with uh, Mayor Knapp, I think I'll take away this, that uh, some people, and I've heard it said that some people, you know, speak uh, because they want to say something. And others speak because they have something to say. And Mayor Knapp is certainly the latter. And uh, I wish uh, Mayor Knapp and his wife, Melody, all the best. And uh, please uh, just look around uh, this city and you will see Mayor Knapp's uh, 
fingerprints on most everything. Um, Wilsonville is, is admired, uh, and I can tell you that the department that I'm honored to run is respected uh, throughout this region because of, of Mayor Knapp and his creative uh, um, uh, prowess, if you will, his, his instincts to do the right thing for the right reasons. And uh, so he will be missed. I will miss him. Um, uh, I can say that, that uh, I have grown uh, to be very, very fond of, of Mayor Knapp. Um, so I wish him nothing but the best in life. And, you know, don't be a stranger. Come back and see us. Mayor Knapp, I have been so honored to serve with you through thick and thin over the many years that we've worked together. I have been thinking about the words that would describe uh, your approach to leadership in Wilsonville, and I came up with the three T's. Tenacity, truthful, and a tough exterior, but a really caring heart inside. When I came back uh, to the region from Washington State after serving uh, for Governor Inslee, you gave me an extensive tour in your minivan of the city of Wilsonville. And I think you had about 20 items on your list that you wanted to hit so that I would have a great overview from you on what you were trying to achieve from affordable housing to bridges to redevelopment. It was all inclusive. So I just want to say thank you for that. And you brought that type of tenacity uh, to every single table you served on, whether it was at JPACT or whether it was on the Transportation Task Force or whether it was on a Clackamas County Coordinating Committee. Uh, I just wanna say thank you for all of your time that you have served. I am grateful that you brought to this job as mayor the same asset management principles that you use on your daily job as a property manager, which is basically you're willing to fix whatever's broke with your own hands no matter how frustrating the problem could be, but yet willing to be part of the team inside the city and in the region to get the solution on the table and meet everybody's needs. So thank you so much. Appreciate all of the hard work and hope that you continue to serve in other capacities as you move away from being mayor. Please stay involved. Thanks. Hey, Tim. Ah, man, it's hard to record this. It's hard to think of you not being around. Um, I don't know how Wilsonville's gonna make it without you, but I do know that the Clackamas County Coordinating Committee and the Metro Mayors and JPAC and all the rest that you've served on all these years are going to be lesser bodies um, for your absence. You bring uh, level-headed, thoughtful, forward-thinking conversation to every single table you sit at. And it's been something that I've come to learn to count on. Um, you've been a great mentor to me and a good friend. Uh, I will miss you a lot going forward. Um, I hope that uh, this is not the end of your political career, although I suspect there are your wife would say otherwise, but um, I really hope that you'll run for a higher office because God knows that uh, we need you. Take care, my friend. Well, Your Honor, this is um, a, a great pleasure for me uh, to spend a couple of seconds telling you how much I have appreciated the ability to work with you over these past almost 18 months. Um, our first meeting was when you interviewed me on a very snowy day in December for the Development Review Board. Uh, that was quite a while ago and uh, I know with all of the people that you have to interview that my interview was probably not significant to you, but it was to me. Um, and I uh, don't believe that I would be in the spot of being appointed as a counselor um, had I not had a really good feeling about your leadership. Um, that is an important uh, factor for me in terms of my time spent with organizations. And I want you to know that I thank you. Um, 
You are a model for uh, leadership in uh, a council and a mayor position. Um, I know that even in my short term that you are well respected not only in our region and our city um, but in uh, the state of Oregon as well and I'm sure beyond. I have uh, had the opportunity to marvel at your attention to detail and your work ethic in terms of the amount of time and energy that you put into uh, your passion for this city. And I think our entire community thanks you for the work that you have done over these many years. Um, you, my, my observations have been in council meetings and in work sessions and dealing with um, you on a personal basis that you are inclusive, that you're fair, um, that you're caring, and that um, your concern for our community is, is above and beyond uh, what we see uh, among many, many people. So on behalf of the newest uh, counselor to the City Council of Wilsonville, I want to say thank you for your service. And I know that you and Melody will enjoy these ne this next adventure uh, that you are embarking upon. And um, I look forward to time to spend together as colleagues and friends in other uh, venues and I wish you the very very best thank you hi I'm Jim Bernard and the chair of the Clackamas County Commission I formerly served as mayor of Milwaukee and that's actually when I met Tim uh, he and Charlotte worked closely together uh, on the uh, League of Oregon Cities um, I've always thought Tim was uh, imaginative uh, very uh, precise person uh, uh, with the League of Oregon Cities, but I think the most important thing about Tim is what he's done for this community. First off, uh, Senate Bill 100, which uh, set the line of development. Tim has worked tirelessly to preserve that line and protect the best farmland, in some cases I've heard, in the world. And that's been very important. Uh, he's also served on many committees with me, uh, Metro uh, Transportation Committees, Metro Land Use Committees, and recently a uh, transportation package that uh, tra uh, Metro is looking at uh, producing. Uh, but that failed, uh, the voters didn't pass that. But you know, he's uh, also served, I, I meet with the mayors of uh, Clackamas County uh, once or twice a month to talk about issues that we could work together on. He's been a tireless advocate of Clackamas County and of course Wilsonville. And if you look to the map to the right of me, uh, Wilsonville has changed a lot in these uh, you know, years. I lived in Villa Bois for a while and I remember when the economy really slowed down and uh, we worried that Wilsonville would just stop right there and then, but he fought the economy, he moved Wilsonville forward, and today it's a beautiful, wonderful city with lots of potential, as well as uh, the Willamette River, use of the Willamette, and of course he's an advocate for replacing or re uh, adding on to the Boone Bridge. So, Wilsonville, you have a great mayor, you should be honored, and Tim, thank you for all you've done for Wilsonville, and for the county, and frankly, for the state of Oregon. So thank you, and good luck on your retirement. I'll be joining you, and uh, but I won't be working on car parts. So thank you, have a great day. Mayor Knapp, congratulations to you and Melody on your newfound freedom from the demanding city and region-centric activities that you have so generously given your time and energy to for so many years. I find your devotion and impact as an elected official amazing. You will be remembered because you made a difference. I always valued you as a progressive, thoughtful, analytic, prepared, and thorough. 
always committed to making careful decisions to achieve positive outcomes for the future of Wilsonville and the metro region. Outstanding for me working with you are a few projects I think you and I remember very well working on together. One was the Climate Smart Communities Project. Remember all those meetings at the, forest, at the forestry center at the zoo? We always wondered, did we make any progress today? Then there was the RTP, the Regional Transportation Plan. Ah, remember all those meetings at the convention center? And dear Kim Ellis, Kim Ellis having to wrangle all those policies and projects into an adoptable plan. Then there were the C4 Metro subcommittee meetings. Ah, so early in the morning, I was barely awake. And the C4 retreats on Mount Hood, we all knew that you had read the materials and were prepared for challenging discussions that really needed to be had. Then there were raising storm rates for the Charbonneau Infrastructure Improvements projects. Now that was a tough one because it was gonna benefit Charbonneau, but the rates would affect all the, the entire city. This was not at all easy for city council or for staff to get through, but you led the council to a successful and pal palatable decision. And those projects are ongoing. And probably what I take most pride in was our team's success on the Basalt Creek concept plan. We, you, Miranda, and I, our city council, and Washington County held firm under intense pressure from our partners, Lewin Company, to the north. We worked hard to uphold wise long-range planning goals, planning goals and principles, and ended up adopting a land use plan to serve not only the area, but the entire region. Sure, we, we do know <laughs> that it takes decades to see the fruits of all these efforts, but you know also, and I know also, that it is so worth it to build better, greater, and smarter communities. Well, in, as you know, I like to check in with my partners, so I asked my Washington County and Clackamas County colleagues to say a few words, which I wanna share with you. First, from Chris Steffabach. Mayor Knapp, you've made a significant contribution to improving land use and transportation policies and advancing projects in Wilsonville, the county, and the region. I have especially appreciated your deep insight on topics at the WCCC and JPAC tables. Here's from Russ Knoble, also from Washington County. Please wish the mayor the best from those of us at Washington County. Mayor Knapp, I hear you're retiring. I am sure many will agree the unique quality of life for people who live, work, and play in Wilsonville is possible in large part because of you. It's been an honor to work closely with you on several large regional projects in Washington County. The one I remember most is the Basalt Creek Transportation Refinement Plan. You fought hard to make sure the needs of your community were represented in the plan. At times, things did not look good. I remember an article that appeared in the Wilsonville Spokesman. The article, referencing an upcoming joint meeting, stated, it seems the whole process just might stall. What this reporter didn't know was that you had already talked with numerous people who would be attending that meeting about areas we could agree on. You started the meeting off by saying, it is in everybody's interest to work together. Because of your leadership, multiple agencies found some common ground to work together on. We will miss your leadership and vision, but you have certainly earned the retirement. I wish you well. Russ. And now from Karen Burek from Clackamas County. I have worked with Mayor Knapp through C4 and C4 Metro. Mayor Knapp always kept C4 and C4 Metro meetings interesting. We could count on him to bring forward the details on how process, processes were accomplished in the past and challenged everyone around the table to be innovative in how we looked at the future. Mayor Knapp was keen to call out details that others may not have considered. He was always thoughtful and working for the best outcome. So in closing, Mayor Knapp, you have given your all and have truly made a 
made a difference. Thank you so much. I wish you your family the very best. Hello everyone, my name is Greg Leo. I'm a consultant to the City for Government Affairs. It's been an honor and a privilege to work with Mayor Tim Knapp over the last, I think, 18 years. I've had the opportunity to see him in many places, down at the Oregon State Legislature, working with Metro, working with the counties, working with the mayors of the region. One thing I can say for sure is Tim Knapp always showed up and he always made Wilsonville look good. He's been a great mayor to work with who has pushed very hard to represent the interests of our city and done a great job. It's been my honor and privilege to work with a truly great mayor, Mayor Tim Knapp. So we, bit, we wish you all the best, Mayor. We think it's a great time to go out and drive the Jaguar. Enjoy your life and thank you so much for all that you have done for the citizens of Wilsonville and for making us look good to Metro, to the state, to the entire Oregon community. Thank you, Mayor Knapp. Hi, Mayor Knapp. I just want to thank you so much for your years as our mayor. It's been incredible working with you in my first term in our legislature, and I know you've really given, dedicated so much of your time and given so much of your heart to our community. And on behalf of so many people in Wilsonville who love this town, thank you so much for your vision, your service, your leadership, your commitment, and we are grateful that you've been our mayor. Tim, I'm Pete Truex, as you well know, the mayor of the city of Forest Grove. And I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you for your service, not only to the city of Wilsonville and the good people of the city of Wilsonville, but to Washington County, indeed to the state of Oregon. A couple of comments, both professional and personal, regarding my relationship with you over the years. I do remember coming to Wilsonville for your State of the City address a number of years ago and you being a very, very gracious host as uh, I came into the City Council Chambers. I appreciated that a great deal. I also remember that we used to have uh, interesting comments at Washington County Coordinating Committee when you would come in the room and when there would be issues that impacted the City of Wilsonville every one of the mayors around the table would sort of look at each other and say, well, what's Tim going to say today? And it would always be something that was four square in support of the people of Wilsonville. That we were absolutely sure. On a personal note, uh, you and Melody played an important role in uh, Pat and my life, lives, when we uh, would meet at uh, Oregon Mayors Association conferences or conferences of the League of Oregon Cities. The opportunity to break bread with you and your wife was always important to Pat and myself. The opportunity to stroll the waterfront in Florence, for example, still stands out. So I just want to say thank you for your service, not only again to the people of Wilsonville, but also to the state of Oregon and I want to thank you for your friendship through the years. May it please the court, ladies and gentlemen of the city. This is my closing argument in the matter of Tim Knapp, mayor of Wilsonville. I've been given about one minute to sum up about 12 years of evidence proving beyond a reasonable doubt that Tim Knapp is guilty of being one of the most hardworking and dedicated public servants any city could hope to have as its mayor. The evidence is overwhelming. Mayor Knapp cares passionately about the city. He has volunteered to serve on just about every governmental committee Im imaginable to further Wilsonville's influence in the region. As an added bonus, he is an excellent parliamentarian who has stepped up during these strange COVID times to lead, lead us through the surreal world of Zoom City Council meetings. If you desire even more evidence, just drive through the city and you will see Mayor Knapp's fingerprints everywhere. I don't have the time to list all the projects and initiatives that occurred under his leadership, so I simply refer, to you to, refer you to his record of the past 12 years. I will highlight just one recent negotiation I had the pleasure of working with the mayor on, the results of which are just beginning to be seen. That negotiation will benefit the city for years to come. 
by bringing in more than $30 million of combined lease revenue and citywide infrastructure improvements in consideration for allowing a rather large regional water pipeline to be placed underground in a portion of this Wilsonville's right-of-way. Mayor Knapp has fought hard for the city, and going forward, something tells me when the city needs him, he will respond to the call. The evidence is clear. He has earned your verdict of being found a local hero. Although he may not be able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, he is a superman and a super mayor who has always stood up for truth, justice, and the Wilsonville way. I rest my case. Tim, thank you very much for all of your hard work and service. Uh, I still wonder, as I've always wondered, why you smart people choose to run for those terrible jobs. But I'm glad you do. I'm glad you did it in Wilsonville over and over again. And I'm sorry that you can't do it again, even though I still wonder why you'd want to. Um, I guess I want to point out that I got to work with the two hardest working and most underpaid mayors in the region. One being you, and the other one being Mark Gamba in Milwaukee. Anyway, all the best to you. I'll be very curious to see what you do next. Thank you. Hi, Tim. Thank you for everything you have done for Wilsonville. It's a wonderful city thanks to all of your participation and leadership. Here's wishing you a lot of fun, relaxation, and discovery as you begin a new era. You'll have more time for friends, family, fun, cars, travel, and more. One thing that I ask is I hope you'll still remain one of our leading citizen volunteers. Happy New Year. I'll see you soon. Mayor Knapp, you were appointed to council to fill a seat vacated by John Helser in 2003. In 2004, you successfully ran for council and served as a member of council until 2008, whereupon you threw your name in the hat to be mayor of Wilsonville, and that's a position that you've served in for the past 12 years. During your time on council, you sat through, conservative estimate here, 408 city council meetings, which translates to roughly 1,632 hours sitting in council chambers reading proclamations and adopting ordinances and resolutions on matters both small and large. This doesn't include all the time that you spent preparing for city council meetings, annual budget committee meetings, serving as a liaison to various city boards and commissions, serving as the city's representative on various regional and county advisory boards, testifying before the state legislature on behalf of Wilsonville, and attending city events, ribbon cutting ceremonies, and the like. During your time on council, you've played a significant role overseeing major planning projects, including Old Town Master Plan, French Prairie Bridge, I-5 Bike and Pedestrian Bridge, Town Center Master Plan, Coffee Creek, Basalt Creek, and Frog Pond West Concept Plans, Coffee Creek Urban Renewal Plan, TIF Zone Urban Renewal Plan, Old Town Escape Street Project, and the Charbonneau Consolidated Infrastructure Master Plan. You've also overseen significant infrastructure and housing projects, including the build-out of Via Bois, the conversion of the Thunder Thunderbird Mobile Home Park, a $40 million sewer treatment plant upgrade, the Big Pipe Project that will bring $17 million to the city for the use of city right-of-way, a new facility for Smart and Fleet, Garden Acres Road Project, and the I-5 interchange upgrade, which included a significant piece of public art we affectionately refer to as Beauty and the Bridge. Your time on council has been marked by productivity and advocacy on behalf of Wilsonville residents and businesses. Your support of staff has been greatly appreciated. You made the employees of this community a priority regardless how, of how busy your personal life was by showing up to summer barbecues and holiday parties. On behalf of a grateful staff, thank you for caring. To be an effective mayor requires time, passion, and commitment which can often mean sacrificing time away from family. For that reason, I want to personally thank your lovely wife, Melody, your children, and your grandchildren for sharing you with us these past 17 years. Tim, enjoy your free time. Finish that car, spend some quality time with family and friends, and rest assured that your legacy is secure and your impact on Wilsonville will live on for years. To quote Mr. Rogers, life is for service. Thank you for your service, Mayor.
Now, if you would kindly extricate from yourself from your seat and go to the outside door uh, and open said door, we have uh, somebody there to present some things to you that we would like you to share with the community. Seriously? Seriously. <laughs> How will we see it? He's going to have to hold them up. We, we have, uh, we have uh, several items for you, Mayor. The one that you just held up, which is your own personalized street sign. We have the gift that did make it through the video editing, which is the uh, gift from the city of Hillsboro from Mayor Calloway. Uh, we have a thumb drive with the copy of the video that we just presented to you. Uh, we know you're an aficionado of uh, a certain type of car, so we have a model handbook for a Jaguar uh, XK150 model. And we also have a model 1951 Jaguar XK120 Roadster. Uh, the coupe wasn't available, sorry, we tried, we couldn't find it. Uh, and the plaque reads, the city of Wilsonville thanks Tim Knapp for over 17 years of public service and dedication to the community. City Council, December 2003 to December 2008. Mayor of Wilsonville, January 2009 to December 2020. On behalf of a grateful community, thank you, Mayor, for your many years of wonderful service to the community. That's the end of the presentation. Wow, I don't know what to say. I didn't expect that. Uh, <laughs> You know, every, every one of you who spoke in that tape uh, are contributing to our city also. And uh, nobody does it alone. I certainly didn't do it alone. Yeah. You know, all, all I did was try to help things move forward and to enable everybody to contribute. And I so appreciate all the electeds and all the staff and uh, my wife, Melody, for all the times that she has had to, to take a back seat to um, city business, government business. So uh, I think Wilsonville is uh, a great place. I hope it stays that way. I don't see any reason it can't. We always have challenges as we go forward, and that will continue to be true. But you folks who are still uh, putting your shoulder to the to the wheel to keep things moving, uh, we'll make it happen. So I just want to thank all all of you that I've worked with. Because it's been it's been really such an interesting uh, experience and so different than anything else I've done in my life. So thank you all. Are we in the next one? So. Uh, <laughs> You're actually up next in the process. Huh? Me? Yes. Okay. I just have to mention one thing that uh, I listened very carefully on all those people who said those things. And one thing they missed, uh, because I have traveled with the mayor and Melody um, around the, the state to League of Oregon Cities conferences and whatnot. And... Uh, and as you would see on the cover of this week's, um, what do you call it, Boonsbury Messenger, you, what you don't know about the mayor, perhaps, is he's an excellent dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so there's a picture of him with Melody. But I can tell you, as a person who is a terrible dancer, that when you dance with the mayor, 
he makes you feel like you know how to dance because he is an excellent dancer. And uh, so I think he has a future on Dancing with the Stars uh, if, he, uh, if he wanted to pursue uh, that avocation. So uh, that's, that's the part I wanted to add that somehow got left out of all those people. <clears throat> and, uh, and then I had one other thing I wanted to say on a somewhat more serious note that is not about the mayor. Um, and that is that today is December 7th. And as we know, it is the uh, day that we'll live in infamy. This is Pearl Harbor Day, uh, 79 years since Pearl Harbor. And what I wanted to say is, of course, uh, as you know, I'm uh, president of the, the cemetery up on the hill. And uh, we have 3,000 people up there. Uh, about 180 are uh, service people who have, have uh, are veterans. Only three of them were died in service, and three of those 180. And one of them, uh, Veryl Heater, um, has a marker up there, um, <clears throat> but he's not there. He's in the Arizona. So I want to recognize him. Uh, on this day, he has a he has a stone up there, but he is not there. He is uh, in uh, Honolulu, in the uh, in the Arizona. His name is on the plaque at the uh, um, memorial for the uh, uh, Arizona. So I just want to recognize Beryl Heater. Um, he was only 23 when he died, and um, <clears throat> and the Heater family is a significant, was a significant historic family, part of the Baker family, and there are still a lot of heaters uh, who are connected to uh, Beryl as well, who are here. So um, just wanted to recognize uh, him on this uh, Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, that's, uh, and that was all I had to say on um, my uh, comments. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Councilor West. Thank you very much. Uh, Mayor Knapp, I will um, say I know very few public servants that work as hard as you do. And um, you have absolutely uh, been an example of someone who gives to their city. And I wish you and your wife the best in your retirement. I don't have anything else to add. Um, about any meetings or anything that I've done, but I would like uh, <laughs> I would like to make um, a motion at this time. Um, I uh, we've been talking about the compensation for uh, counselors and uh, the mayor's position, and it was um, in goal setting my first goal setting two years ago uh, that we put this forward. And I put this forward as a possible, and it became a goal for the council. And we're coming at the end of two years here in December. And so I'd like to move to have staff come back at the 12 21 20 council meeting, options for council and mayor compensation, which will include a monthly stipend with an escalator that increases, uh, maybe with inflation or the cost of living. And if I get a second, I hope that we can discuss that um, and maybe get this done before the end of the year. I would be happy to second that. I know it was a council goal and we have uh, um, uh, not pursued it at the pace that we should have. So I'm happy to uh, support that. Okay, so we have a formal motion from Councilor West and a second from Councilor Lee Han. And uh, indeed, this is a topic that has uh, percolated in the background for at least a decade that I know of. And uh, I, I, uh, Councilor West, would you like to uh, lead off some discussion with what your perspective is or what you what you would hope. Uh, Councilor Ackerwald, did you have a question first? I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to make a um, comment before we move into discussion on the item. Okay. I wanted to acknowledge that this would be a conflict of interest um, for me, so I'm recusing myself from the discussion and this decision. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Linville? 
Um, <clears throat> Your Honor, I I need to do the same. I I I need to declare a. Uh, uh, a, a possible conflict of interest on this discussion as I, um, uh, there's a possibility that I would benefit from um, a, uh, any decision that would be made in the affirmative regarding council compensation. So um, I would like to recuse myself from both the discussion and the voting. Thank you. Uh, that leaves three members of council who can discuss uh, this at this uh, point. Uh, if this passes, uh, I, as I understand the motion, staff would be bringing back material to inform the council and then uh, it would be up to the, the uh, three councilors uh, who are not in a conflict position to uh, move it forward if they chose to do so. So, Councillor Buzz-Bayhan? Well, I was just gonna say, my understanding is um, we would be, staff would also be bringing back a resolution yeah. that we could proceed on. And the um, exact amount of any compensation, I mean, our intention is that uh, counselors would receive some sort of monthly stipend, not a salary that would not carry any, any other um, um, benefits with it, but, um, and the mayor would receive uh, a higher amount than the than the council, uh, but I don't think we need to make that decision uh, today. I, I think we, if we have a resolution before us and um, that comes before us, we can have a fuller discussion once we get more information from staff and uh, as to just how we are best to proceed. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to step in in, the, in front of the maker of the motion. But. Yeah, yeah. I, Councilor West, do you want to give us some uh, perspective? Yeah, I, uh, I, I always grew up being told by my dad that um, a certain level of work um, should be compensated and it's the just and equitable thing to do. And I know that everybody on this council and the mayor especially has led in this example more than most elected, like I said, I've ever seen. Nobody can doubt the work ethic and the work that it takes, especially in the mayor's position. Um, and Mayor Knapp has uh, at times um, dedicated above and beyond what uh, many would be expected to do in the position, and that 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 is that's that's a benefit that Wilsonville will always have, and um, the mark that he put on this community will always be there. Um, there's hours and hours of work that go into preparing for a council meeting. There's meetings outside of a council meeting, um, and sometimes in, unless you have some type of job that allows you to make big sacrifices, or you have real flush on income, or if you're retired, um, you, you you don't really have the ability to serve, even if you'd be a good person to serve on council with those new ideas and new perspectives and bring a more diverse thought into the council. And I think that this is an equity issue that allows more people to have the opportunity to serve without taking a loss. Um, if you have young children and you you would have to have childcare. Um, if you um, have to take time off work, then you lose that income. And to serve, you shouldn't necessarily go into the negative. Is kind of my thought process around this. And um, no one's expecting anybody to make this a living. And I don't think that that's what I'm proposing or my motion proposes. But the ability just to stay level um, and to realize that there's a certain level of work that goes into this that reaches that point where it would be appropriate for somebody to be compensated and equitable. And as we look forward to the future as a council, and we wanna be a more equitable city, and we wanna give more people opportunity to have their voices heard and to participate in the process and, um, and open that up, I think that having some type of type in there to allow people to do that and to give them the resources to do that without taking a loss is um, something that we should look at. Now we've grown as a city and, uh, and the demand on I think councilor's time and the mayor's time um, has, uh, um, is substantial. 
and I don't know if I could, I mean, I have ideas around what I would think would be possibly appropriate. Maybe we talk about that next meeting, like Councilor Lehan said. Um, maybe we can all kind of think about it and talk about it offline. But that's kind of my thought process about the importance of this uh, motion um, and why I'm happy to do it. Make it. And, and along those lines, I, I do agree this is a, um, an equity and inclusion kind of uh, issue so that it is so that fewer people are precluded from um, serving. Um, but also it's in recognition of when I first came on council uh, back in the olden days, um, a council packet was, you know, 40 or 50 pages long. And now they're 400 pages long at, at a minimum. Some of them are seven, 800 pages for crying out loud. Um, the time it takes to, um, to be informed on these things and the number of boards and commissions that we uh, manage, the number of uh, committees that the mayor has to, as we just heard, um, has to deal with outside the city. Um, all of these things have just mushroomed since, uh, since the 1990s. So, um, so it's, a, it, it's running away from us and I think precluding more and more people from participating. Well, I uh, can certainly attest to the uh, potential amount of time that it can take to do the mayor's job as well as uh, to the increasing complexity of the council job since I've done both. Um, I, I think it's a worthy uh, discussion to have and, and therefore I will support the motion to ask staff to bring this back to us with a resolution uh, sufficient for us to actually implement uh, here before the end of the year. Uh, next meeting, I think the, the uh, city attorney will be able to explain for the public's uh, uh, absorption what the technicalities are about what is uh, allowable and in, in compliance with uh, Oregon ethics law and all that sort of thing and uh, how we would have to do this if we choose to do it. Um, I think Councilor West makes some very strong points uh, about the, the equity side. I don't think that it should be only people who are privileged economically or uh, privileged in, ter in terms of uh, uh, maybe having their career behind them and having uh, time to uh, to uh, participate in council. I, I don't think those are the only people that have good ideas for the city. And I would very much like to see a, a structure that would enable people, uh, a broader range of people within our community to participate should they choose uh, to do so. And I don't think that uh, losing income or uh, having to pay uh, for auxiliary services while you go to council meetings or prepare for council meetings uh, it is a very uh, inclusive way to, to do things. So I'm hopeful that we can find uh, better improvements. I think that, that uh, if, if we choose to do this, it's important that it be structured with some kind of a um, indexing to, to something, and I certainly would defer to city uh, staff on what's the appropriate way to do that so that councils are not put into the position in the future of having uh, to uh, debate whether or not amounts are uh, continue to be adequate or are inadequate. Uh, so I think that's an important component. Uh, I think that from some of the discussion I've heard, it's important that this would be structured so that um, it would not take effect until this coming fiscal year. So we have a chance to budget appropriately leading up to it, which is something we do through the first half of the calendar year. So, so it's timely for that. Um, it it uh, seems to me that we're at the right time to do this uh, because uh, we do have a couple new counselors coming on. 
uh, or a couple of counselors who will, will be starting a new term in uh, January. And um, some of us, uh, I won't be there, of course, and uh, um, Councillor Lehan will be term limited also, so she will not be able to have benefit of this uh, unless she were to uh, run for something again after some years. Uh, so it seems like it's the appropriate time for this to consider this. Uh, I would like to ask staff if they feel like the direction uh, as we are currently verbalizing is uh, clear enough to enable uh, staff to bring back the appropriate uh, information and a, a actual uh, resolution that we would uh, be able to add uh, specific amounts to or specific uh, uh, times to or something like that so that we could actually be prepared to execute this uh, at the subsequent meeting in December. I, I think the direction is clear, but I think there's some context and maybe some additional conversation that you might want to have tonight. Um, Cause if you're, if we're trying to get this done before the end of the year, you're only going to have one meeting and that's the next one to adopt the resolution. So some things that I just want to discuss with you is Going back to the background on this, we have been talking about this since at least 2017, if not before. Um, we have a bunch of data that we've compiled from other cities. Staff will update that data and that will be part of the packet that comes to you so you have that information so you know what other cities have done along this line. Some other things you need to think about is there are individual tax implications depending on your tax bracket. This will impact you um, individually um, because the IRS does have rules for um, income even though it's considered a stipend, it's still money coming to you. Um, also, just for your consideration, as anybody that might be philosophically opposed to collecting the stipend, they will have the ability to opt out just as they do um, have the ability to opt out of the health insurance that the city provides our elected officials. And uh, a future council also have the ability to eliminate the program altogether if they so choose. Um, and then I did appreciate, Mayor, that you brought up the budget um, impacts and um, it would be my recommendation that you not make this um, final in terms of uh, beginning the program until July 2021, which would be the beginning of our new fiscal year. I have some ideas on how you could index this. Um, I would suggest that you give me some direction on that. I would either tie it to an average of the cost of living increases for our two collective bargain agreements, or you look at the CPIU for Portland. Those are the two options that I would bring back to you. In terms of the amount, I would suggest that you come up with a three tier system, uh, one for the mayor, one for the council president, which would be an acknowledgement of the fact that the council president serves as the mayor in the mayor's absence and also has additional duties as assigned by the mayor when he or she can't attend certain events or functions. Those generally fall to the um, council president and then one additional tier for city council members. The, the hard part for me, and I'm glad that you said you could leave the part blank is you'll have to make that decision because ultimately the city council sits as the final uh, fiduciary agents of the city. I can give you what I think the budget impacts will be, um, but you're going to have to fill in that amount. And if you want to um, tweak that between now and the 21st is going to be difficult. So we're going to have to give some thought to what that amount is. I can send out, um, the spreadsheet that we put together back in 2017 with the updated figures. So you'll want to be thinking about that before the 21st. And I think that's all I have, unless the city attorney has anything she wants to add. No, I will go through the um, ethics rules and regulations prior to the discussion next meeting. I think that would be the best time to do that rather than do it now and then just repeat it. So if you have any direction on amounts or something like that, um, that might be useful to have that discussion or any other considerations that you want, because you're asking me to put together a recommendation, I assume, along with providing data. Okay, so I heard you say that you think we should clarify what indexing to use tonight. No, not tonight. I, I just wanted to throw out that those are the considerations you'll want to think about. We can put right. in a, a, okay. a placeholder for indexing, and I'll give you my ideas, but you might want to think about others as well. 
Okay, and, and as to uh, amounts of stipends that might be proposed, we haven't really had a discussion about that. Are you looking for those tonight or can we fill those blanks into the resolution after we discuss at next meeting if we choose to do that? Well, if you have amounts now, that would make it easy. Um, if not, then you can wait for the data. You probably already have the data. I'm not sure how much changed between 2017 and, and today, but there, there's a chance that some of it could have changed, but. Yeah. Councilor Lehan. Uh, I, I don't feel like I have a need for the data. Um, I mean, it, other than it's, uh, it's mildly interesting, but um, <clears throat> but I, I mean I think this is a council decision, and um, and I I think almost every city council in Oregon, uh, with the exception of maybe four of them, is grossly undercompensated. So to to look at um, other city councils that are that are also being paid nothing and compare them to us, um, that's, that's of limited helpfulness is what I would say about those, about the other data. It's, it's mildly interesting to see what, what the others are, but I think we need to make that decision. And, um, and I haven't had the chance to uh, discuss it um, in any greater detail with uh, the other counselors or certainly with the two counselors who are um, available to vote on it. But, um, but I think between now and then, perhaps in another four or five days, we could come up with something like a proposal, but I, 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 don't, I don't see that happening tonight. It's just one. It's just something you'll you'll be need to uh, prepared to fill in the blank on the twenty first. Yep, yep. We'll definitely be prepared to do that. Okay. Councilor West. Um, I was not here in two thousand seventeen. My first year was uh, eighteen, so I haven't seen all that information. And it would be beneficial to me maybe to do a little bit of homework. I have some ideas in my mind, and like, but they're not. Um, they, pro they they probably need a little evidence and education. But I don't have that same background as Mayor Knapp and Councillor Lehan. Um, I, I feel really comfortable moving forward. With this. I think this is a this is a really good move moving forward. I just. Um, even if it just takes a couple of days, we'd like a little opportunity for some review and some uh, reflection. We, we will update the data that we have already put together um, if there's any changes. If not, we can get that emailed out um, hopefully by Friday at the latest. And, and if I have an idea or we have an idea, can I know that do can I direct like I'm feeling this way and then, and then kind of give you guys a little bit of um, you can knowledge where what I'm thinking that could be help you be more prepared. Is there communication that can happen between now and the 21st? You can communicate right. with me. I would um, I would um, suggest that you not communicate with one another so you're not deliberating toward a decision outside of the public process. Okay. Um, Certainly share all your ideas with me, and then if I feel like there's a sweet spot between the three of you who are going to vote on this, then I can bring that back in in the form of a recommendation. Okay. So I, I guess I'd like to say a little more just so that we are in a public process here. Um, there was an action by the budget committee almost 10 years ago, and I don't remember exactly. It was like 2011 or 12 or somewhere in there uh, to compensate the mayor at uh, $1,500 stipend per month. Uh, uh, and then sometime, you know, not very long thereafter, uh, there was uh, some push by certain members of council and a certain uh, citizens uh, outside of council to uh, change that. So they met in a committee meeting and Council uh, received their recommendation and voted to cut that $1,500 in, in half. So my stipend has been 750 through almost a decade. Um, 
we're quite a ways down the road. Uh, you council people know pretty much, I think, the range of different things the mayor does. Uh, if we ever get out of COVID and start meeting together, I think things will move back toward that uh, direction of a lot of meetings to interface with, even if some things still remain on Zoom. The need to represent Wilsonville as we are now a city of nearly, what, 24,000 or something people and uh, all these businesses with uh, major payrolls and we continue to be trying to proactively work to create uh, very, uh, very great neighborhoods and places for people to live with all kinds of different levels of, of uh, economic capability and choices, uh, but make them all good neighborhoods and uh, create business environments that continue to attract family wage jobs. All this gets more and more complicated. And uh, the world is different than it was 10 years ago. Uh, so I hope that we can provide you know, if the council's will is to do this, I hope we can provide something that is meaningful enough that it can make a difference that a person that otherwise would be unable to perform and to, to run and, and perform the duties if they're elected uh, can lean on it to be able to do so. And, and that's really my goal. And, and I think we need to have some discussion about what it takes to accomplish that. But we'll have to have that um, in a public forum. And I think it's premature to have that tonight. <clears throat> yeah, let's get it on the agenda. Yeah, so it would need to be on the work session agenda uh, and on the uh, council meeting agenda for uh, the second meeting in December if we're going to deal with this. Can you work with that, Mr. Cosgrove? Yes, we can. We have, well, like I said, we already have most of the work done. So it's just a matter of updating okay. stuff and, and putting it in the form of a staff report. So we can do that. All right. Uh, we will need to vote on this motion uh, as instruction to staff, uh, members of council who are participating. Anything further you'd like to do before we vote? Okay. If not, I'll um, call for the vote on the uh, motion. And uh, I understand two of our counselors have indicated that they will uh, not participate, so they will probably uh, indicate abstention. Uh, but council, what is your vote on the motion as on the uh, instruction we've just uh, voiced to staff with regard to council compensation. All in favor, please say aye, raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Aye, three in favor, any opposed? And abstentions, two abstentions. Councilor Linville, Councilor Ackerval abstaining. Okay. Um, we're, we're, uh, Clear on that then, nothing further needed, Mr. Cosgrove, for tonight? I got what I need, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councilor Linville, I'm sorry to hold you up so long in your turn here, but it's your turn. <laughs> it's my turn, good. Um, well, just, um, I'll, I'll try and be brief. Um, December the 2nd was the most recent Willamette Falls Locks Commission meeting and um, just some quick uh, comments about um, the commission. Um, this was the 15th meeting of the, of the commission. And um, there are some members that are leaving. Uh, mayor Axelrod, who has been the chair of the commission, he's the uh, mayor at Westland, is um, leaving at the end of December and he will vacate the chair position. And um, there are co-vice chairs, Commissioner Martha Schrader and Sandy Carter will continue on um, uh, as the co-chairs. And uh, the commission has sent a letter to the legislature, the, the Oregon legislature, hoping that we can get early on in the, the agenda in the 
uh, next session that begins after the first of the year to get um, support for um, uh, transference of the um, locks to a public corporation. Um, and the concern there is that if the uh, legisl Oregon legislature fails to um, uh, pass a bi bipartisan bill early in the session, that failure of the state to create the public cor corporation might put the locks in jeopardy in the long term um, from a federal perspective because they are wanting to transfer um, a federal uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineer um, oversight of the locks um, and the authority to um, to a public entity, and if the if the state of Oregon doesn't make that happen, then we are a little concerned that it may end up being um, a a either either you transfer it or you cement them closed, and the Army Corps of Engineers will vacate uh, regardless. So we're hoping that there will be lobbying to support a bill, um, and we think that um, uh, Mark Meeks will probably be the person who will uh, put that bill forward. Our, um, until we have something um, moving forward on that where there's not much that the commission can do, our next commission will likely be in February, although there's a, a, a chance that we could meet in January. Um, some new members as well as um, some elected officials are um, either resigning their positions or were not reelected. Um, I, I attended the um, December 3rd um, League of Oregon, uh, of Oregon Cities Leader Conference call, and that was an incredibly informative call because they talked about the, uh, the distribution of the vaccines and when they thought this might happen. Um, interestingly enough, we're supposed to get 110,000 doses, which is enough uh, for two, it'll be two dose. Those are two, 110,000 two dose do, uh, vaccines for the month of December, in the month of December, and start distri distributing those. Uh, the people that obviously that'll be on the first line are going to be the first responders or the um, healthcare workers and first responders, but those numbers far exceed the 110,000 doses that are coming. So, um, um, generally, I think it, at what, what the Oregon Health um, Authority was saying is that the general public will not have any access to immunizations until probably well after March. Um, I also wanted to just mention that December 7th is, is a significant date as well in terms of that Pearl Harbor Day. My mother was in, uh, was born and raised in Honolulu and was there uh, in Honolulu when they bombed Pearl Harbor. So I heard lots of stories of what happened during that time. And so that's a significant date in my family as well. Um, I will be on the, I've been invited to um, participate in the Where's Wilson uh, event on December the 9th. So I am going to be working with the chamber and just giving some brief comments and then giving a clue about where where Wilson is on December the 9th. Um, and then I'm gonna participate in the December 11th elected um, um, essentials workshop uh, that the state is holding, and um, that, that is all I have. Well, thank you. Just like the rest of us, it sounds like you know, you're finding a lot of stuff happening, even though we're in the midst of a pandemic, yeah. in the midst of a, of a winter approaching season. So good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, 
why don't we try to get our formal business on board then, uh, proceeding with the consent agenda uh, as modified. Resolution number 2866, a resolution of the city of Wilsonville acting in its capacity as the local contract review board authorizing the city manager to execu execute a contract with automated merchant services and Merrick Bank. A resolution adopting the canvas of votes of the November 3, 2020 general election. So the second item is resolution 2867, I believe. Yes, yeah, sorry about that. Okay, uh, is there a motion on consent to items as read? Councilor West. Your Honor, I move to uh, approve the consent agenda as read. Thank you. Is there a second? Councilor Linville, second? I'll second the motion. Thank you very much. All in favor, please say aye. Raise your hands. Aye. 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 Uh, we have five unanimous votes on the consent agenda as uh, described. Bring us into new business. First of all, resolution, <coughs> excuse me, resolution number 2864. <coughs> resolution number 2864, resolution and order amending resolution 2858 to further extend the local state of emergency and emergency measures as authorized by resolution number 2803. And on this one, I would just note that you've got a revised copy of this um, amended resolution. The mayor's eagle eye caught that there was a missing date in it. And so we fixed that and we've had this emergency order in, in effect nonstop without any lapse the entire time. And the, and the reason for the resolution now is this brings it through February 2. Um, the governor's order goes through December 31 and then our next meeting after that will um, be on that date. So we may well need to extend it again, but this keeps us in the emergency state and available to apply for emergency funds as and when they become available. Thank you. Um, any questions from council? Seeing none, what council, what is your pleasure with regard to resolution 2864? Councilor President Ackerwell. I move to approve resolution number 2864. Thank you. Is there a second? Council Lee hand second. Thank you very much. Any further discussion needed? If not, all in favor of the motion uh, to approve resolution 2864, please say aye, raise your hand. Aye. aye. It's unanimous, five votes in favor. Thank you very much. Bringing us to resolution 2865. Resolution number 2865, a resolution of the city of Wilsonville adopting the findings and recommendations of the 2020 solid waste franchise rate review process as documented in the solid waste collection report, November, 2020. Okay, uh, we had a presentation on this. There's a copy of it in the packet this time also. Uh, any questions for staff? Mark, did you, uh, Mr. Otnad, did you have more presentation you wanted to? Uh, I do have a brief presentation. Okay, let's do that. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to push. No problem whatsoever. I'll start uh, screen sharing now. And good evening, Mayor. Oh. Mark Otnett, City of Wilsonville, Public Government Affairs Director. Um, and this is regarding adoption of resolution number 2865 pertaining to the 2020 solid waste collection report. Our consultant, Chris Bell, CPA, um, this is us in developing the uh, report. Uh, tonight's report uh, presentation will cover the rate process. We'll also know cost increases that could occur next year, as well as the of the 2020 recycling services. The 2020 rate review process basically showed uh, that the returns, the overall rate of returns were reasonable um, uh, in reporting to the operations, but that overall revenues, um, uh, the rate of return was decreasing over time. 
Various factors uh, resulted in the 2020 re uh, rates. Uh, there was a rate decrease by the City Council uh, regarding the recycling surcharge that was approved last year, excuse me, on January 1st of 2020. Uh, COVID had impacts to Republic Services operation that decreased revenues by uh, 4%. Additionally, personal operations at Republic Services uh, increased both in terms of wages and health insurance, as well as the metro tipping fee increased uh, slightly during the time period. Additional factors, inflation increased by a little over 2% during the time frame. Other costs also increased during that time frame. The city franchise fees uh, was increased by two percentage points to the standard five percentage points, which is a 40% increase compared to 29. And finally, there was a new Oregon corporate activity tax that has also resulted in new uh, cost. A year-to-year -year comparison of expenses shows uh, that indeed expenses uh, increased at the same time, uh, the uh, operating margin decreased from 16% to a little over 11%. The rate review results summary basically, again, shows the uh, rate has the rate of return, the operating margin has returned, decreased from 16% to 11.3. However, that is within the uh, franchise operating margin of 80 to 12%. The projected 11.3 is within the target and therefore no rate change is recommended at this time in the report. Now the resolution results in no rate change effective January 1st, 2021. We will note some potential cost increase, however, for next year that will likely result in a rate increase for 2021. Uh, the metro tipping fee, uh, excuse me, uh, fees proposed to increase. Additionally, there's other fees that are also proposed to increase uh, next year that may increase earlier than originally projected. Also, there's an issue regarding metro allocations to the private transfer stations, uh, which is in Wilsonville, Republic Services operates the WRI uh, franchise that takes transferred waste, which could see a decrease in its allocations. These are f the uh, fixed costs that will result in increased potential rates to Wilsonville customers. So there are price increases coming next year. We likely will not have a third year in a row of no weight uh, garbage rate increases. Uh, the citizens of Wilson have been fortunate to have two years of no rate increases. In terms of the new recycling services uh, that were being rolled out for 2020, there were five new sets of recycling services, residential food waste collection, bulky waste pickup for ADA and senior citizens, residential commercial polystyrene or styrofoam collection, commercial fluorescent tube and battery recycling, and commercial food waste program. And briefly on each one of these, the residential food waste collection program began uh, timely in February of this year, where basically residents could add food waste compost uh, to their uh, yard debris trimmings. The City Council has approved 500 compost buckets to be distributed next year to encourage further uh, recycling. The bulky waste pickup program uh, had some delays because of COVID. However, it picked back up again and now over 46 pickups out of a projected 100 have occurred to date. The new polystyrene collection station uh, has been uh, set up, opened in February. Uh, bagged polystyrene, but not peanuts, um, so black foam. Um, we've had some contamination, but we're working on public education to improve uh, the contamination issues. With Regarding the commercial business for us in tube and battery recycling program, we started working on that. The COVID uh, uh, situation hit. We're now regrouping to figure out protocols for calling on businesses. However, we do have the recycling boxes uh, on site ready for distribution. 
Finally, the commercial food waste program was mandated by Metro. It was to start this year uh, in March with the largest food producers, but it's been delayed a year uh, until March 2021, and it may be delayed a bit further again due to the COVID-19, uh, the situation being so fluid. That, in a nutshell, is the presentation for resolution number 2865. Any questions, Mayor or City Council? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, Council, any questions you would like clarification on or comments? Councilor President Eckerbal. Thank you. And thank you for the presentation. Um, it, in your presentation, you mentioned, and as well as um, in the report that was produced, um, about the Metro's regional system fee that may be increasing. And it sounds like that may be effective January 1st, 2021, which is coming right up. So um, I was curious when we might know kind of the, the time timeline of that, of when, you know, if it's certain and what's the process of, of letting um, customers know as well, because I know, you know, people like to be able to plan and um, see what's coming down the road. Sure, uh, Mayor, uh, Council Ackerman, great question. I see that our rate consultant, Chris Bell, has joined us. Uh, perhaps he can opine on this very good question. Yeah, the um, that whole situation is rather fluid because Metro typically will, uh, in the past, has set the rates to coincide with the fiscal year. And this year they passed on it. And so they've been proposing and kind of fishing and trying to figure out when they should propose it. But there's been a substantial backlash uh, by most of the cities within the metropolitan area as well as the haulers because um, when rates are usually adjusted, they are adjusted either on July 1st or at the end of the year. And so Metro has the latest um, proposal that I've seen from Metro is they're looking at pushing it back to July 1st. And the um, rate that they're looking at, uh, the one that I got from um, uh, Marisa that she recently sent out, and this was on... Uh, Friday, December 4th, is that they're looking at increasing the regional system fee from 1858, and if they push it back to July 1st, they're going to increase that to 2565, which is a substantial increase. Um, so that's what we, that's what we got to look forward to. Um, and with that, as Mark uh, as summarized in the presentation, there's also going to be a decrease in the amount of tons that Metro is going to allow the non-Metro uh, transfer stations to accept, and this is wet waste, and that will impact uh, Republic Services to some degree um, because they've got a substantial amount of fixed costs, and it's you know, uh, the amount of tons reduced increases that fixed cost or that, that tipping fee. So uh, I would anticipate that, um, you know, maybe a dollar to two dollar increase on their tonnage fee plus the regional system fee, which would be effective July 1st. And what I typically do is I work with most of the jurisdictions within Clackamas County. So we will, we will prepare something. Uh, and, you know, as soon as we get that information and know what it's going to be measurable, then we'll send that to Mark. And um, at that point, the city council will be appraised of what the condition will be or what the uh, financial impact will be, whether uh, city council wants to raise rates uh, and push that rate increase through effective July 1st or whether there's enough uh, margin or enough uh, return in the rates that uh, Republic sent to push that back to January 1st. So either way, once we get that and once we get the financial results from Republic Services for the current year, we'll make a, make it a point to, to inform the city. Okay, thank you. Thanks okay. for that additional information. Other questions? I wanted to ask, and maybe this is a little too esoteric, but what is the logic of reducing tonnage to contract centers in a way that increases cost to the consumer? Oh, it's real easy. Metro wants the tons to go through their transfer station. <laughs> That's all it is. Um, they've, they've set up the system where they are supposed to receive 40% of the tons. 
and then whatever's left is pushed around to the to the outside transfer stations, whether it's WRI or the few in Washington County or the, or the the other ones on the outside area in in Multnomah County. The problem with that process is the growth is you know being pushed out on the outskirts of the metropolitan area it doesn't make sense for example for you know in wilsonville you're going to get the tons um the the the, the collected tons are going to go through wri but you know tons that are on the edge may have to go to metro central or excuse me in this case metro south uh, because of the tonnage caps and so that process has been in place for a couple of years now uh, and there's been a lot of questions on the way metro has been doing that in the past and whether they should continue to do that in the future um, with this process that we've gone through and the questions that have been raised by local jurisdictions metro has said that they're going to do a large uh, feasibility study on the entire system prior to um, proposing building a new transfer station on the west side, and and I believe that um, the city of Sherwood had a, uh, the city of Sherwood last week had a work session meeting with Metro, and they summarized the takeaways from that that meeting. And I can I can have a, a, a Joe Gall, the city manager, at Sherwood, send you a copy of that. But it pretty much said, listen, before Metro. Um, does anything drastic and that's build a transfer station they want to do a study and find out where the tons are flowing how they're going to be capped whether a, a full-blown transfer station is needed on the west side because if metro does build a transfer station a full-blown transfer station on the west side they're estimating anywhere from 50 to 110 million dollars for a facility that that you know right now commercial tons are flowing on the west side of in washington county and it's not really necessary but if they build that, that cost is going to be absorbed in the regional system fee, and citizens from the city of Wilsonville are going to be paying for a transfer station they're not going to use that's going to be established in Cornelius. And that's the, one of the big problems that uh, these other jurisdictions who have a transfer station, whether it's in Multnomah County or whether it's in uh, the you know, Sherwood or Tigard or uh, you know, Wilsonville, they don't want to pay for a facility they're not going to utilize. So there's still a lot of questions that Metro has to answer and has to study. And so this is a process that I think is going to take a couple of years. Uh, what really kind of messed it up, again, was the, 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 the shutdown of the businesses and the reduction in tons. Um, to your question, with a lot of the rioting and a lot of the shutdowns, a lot of those tons that, are, were, that were being generated in the city of Portland to go to Metro Central are no longer going there. And so Metro has seen that their tonnage numbers, again, like everyone else, are decreasing. Their costs are going up, and, and you know they have a mechanism in place, whether it's fair or unfair, I, I believe it's completely unfair, to pull tons from other transfer stations to offset some of their losses at the expense of these other private transfer stations. So there, there's a deficiency in the system that I think um, needs to be addressed, and I think that uh, you know the one thing that this – uh, situation has done is it, it it's kind of brought to the surface a lot of the problems and a lot of the issues that Metro and and its partners need to figure out what they want to do going forward how they want to handle tonnage trans, tr tonnage uh, caps and costs and who pays for what so that's a long answer to your to your question yeah. well no but it's it's uh, on target and uh, it seems to me that it uh kind of accents the extent to which Wilsonville, perhaps in coordination with some of the Washington County cities, needs to be in the dialogue, needs to be having a place at the table, not just waiting to see what happens to us. <laughs> Well, one of the one of the council members, uh, Councilor uh, uh, Rossner from City of Sherwood, said the same thing. He said, "Listen, you know, when you come out with this study, we need to have people, people who are representative of the, of the, of the cities." And I like the idea of having city council members because you know, when you get one person or a couple people on that. You guys ask questions that are critical. You get a lot of input from 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 the citizens. So I think it's 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 a good situation to have somebody who is elected, who is in a position to understand and and provide input to. Metro. Yeah. So I, I hope that that process does happen, uh, happen starting next year. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, perhaps our staff will have a channel into Metro staff and can, you know, perhaps uh, lever a little bit, uh, you know, what we think should happen in, in that uh, study process because it sounds like we ought to be engaged now. Mayor, a couple thoughts oh, yes, on sir. this. Um, I, I will forward the, the uh, letter from Sherwood to City Council. Um, I guess as I was reading about all these decisions they were making to it, it occurred to me that 
Uh, Metro has a lot of different you, regional strategies out there, and I don't think they're necessarily in alignment on this one particular issue where they have a financial uh, stake in the game. Like, I'm, I'm concerned that it doesn't line up at all with their climate smart communities, reducing BMTs, carbon footprint reduction. Um, and I would propose that we consider putting together a working group by the cities that are most impacted by these decisions, much as we did with the uh, working group that we put together with uh, Metro on the one-off urban, um, urban growth boundary expansions, which I thought was a very successful process. So I think I, with your direction and, and the agreement with council, I think I would propose that we put together a, a, uh, a discussion with Metro staffers to see if they would be uh, amenable to that as they were with the UGB decision. Uh, I, I can't imagine why any of us would oppose it. Does anybody want to speak or any council would like to uh, voice any different perspective or should we no. with staff to push it? I think we do. Seeing agreement all the way around, Mr. Cosgrove. All right, thank you. All right. Uh, of course, ultimately, I would love to see the the uh, anaerobic digester brought come back to Wilsonville, so we could be producing gas out of that uh, wet waste. <laughs> All right. Uh, anything else? Other questions for staff? Clarifications? If none, council, uh, what is your pleasure with regard to resolution 2865? Councilor Linville. Your Honor, I move um, approval of resolution number 2865. Second. Second by Councilor West. Thank you very much. <coughs> Discussion at all? Beyond the questions we've had? If not, I'll call for the vote. All in favor of the uh, motion to adopt resolution 2865, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 It's unanimous. We have five in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you to our staff and uh, consultant also. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. That will bring us to resolution 2868. Resolution number 2868, a resolution of the city of Wilsonville establishing a restaurant relief program to address impacts associated with COVID-19. Mr. Namsu, good evening again. Good evening, Mayor Knapp, members of council. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen for a short PowerPoint presentation. Thank you very much. I'm here tonight to uh, present to you the Wilsonville Restaurant Relief Program. Uh, I, I wanna start off just by pointing out how visionary the council is being by initiate, initiating this grant program on behalf of Wilsonville's restaurants. Uh, I wanna give a special shout out to Councilor Linville and to Chamber CEO, Kevin Porosky O'Malley, who are really the driving force behind this concept. Council has engaged in numerous conversations over the last couple of meetings regarding a wide variety of ideas. Uh, I've kind of taken this in Jordan's absence over the last uh, week, week plus, and uh, have been able to bring forward what is a pretty straightforward proposal for the council's consideration. Um, excuse me one second here. This is a slide that is an overview of city assistance programs that have been prepared in response to the COVID-19 pandemic that have already been put in place. Uh, we have the uh, gift card program and utility relief with Wilsonville Community Sharing. We have two significant small business relief grants for general hospitality, uh, general business and for hospitality. The uh, city council um, worked with us on creating the Dine Out Wilsonville program, which is a a free planning permit for outdoor tents and, and things set up on the exterior of restaurants to try to uh, streamline and expedite the review and issuance of permits to accommodate outdoor, outdoor dining. And uh, last week, we entered into a partnership with, Wil with the Wilsonville Spokesman uh, to partner on a shop local campaign, which is a five week campaign, social media and printed media campaign, encouraging folks to visit local business and to shop local. And this evening, I'm here to present a restaurant relief program in the amount of $80,000. 
so the total that the council has uh, been working on for the past many months uh, is totaling $560,500, which is a significant uh, amount of money. And again, I just want to give the council significant credit for having such a vision and being proactive and moving so quickly. That's the, the key here. That a lot of uh, municipalities are talking about these things, but uh, the Wilsonville City Council is moving. So that's a, 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 tremendous, a tremendous thing on behalf of our restaurants. The purpose of the program is to provide economic relief to resident, to restaurants negatively impacted by the COVID-19 restrictions. The proposal is relatively simple, relatively straightforward. It's an $80,000 uh, grant program from Urban Renewal Program Income. The idea is that we would create two tiers of benefits. There would be a $50,000 pot for full service, sit down brick and mortar restaurants. And there are 24 of those in the community and $30,000 would be allocated for general takeout self-service restaurants. The, the idea between the two, uh, the two different categories is that the full service sit down brick and mortar restaurants are really feeling the impacts of the pandemic the, the most. They, uh, they have been affected by the governor's orders. They are not uh, able to accommodate interior dining in their facilities at this point. And uh, they've got large staffs of wait, wait folks and line cooks and different, different types of folks who are being negatively impacted by the pandemic. The grants in the full service sit down brick and mortar would come out to about $2,083 each and the general takeout uh, self-service restaurants, those grants, there's 32 of those, those would be $937.50 per establishment. Just like in the first round of grants, we've got mandatory criteria. Uh, the business must have a current City of Wilsonville business license and be located inside the city limits. They're going to have to provide the city a W-9 form along with a very basic application for tracking purposes. It's a non-competitive grant. So anybody who applies for the grant, if they're an eligible restaurant, they're going to receive the funds. And um, the funds must be used for business operations only. And uh, they need to be current on city utilities and uh, payment on the transit tax in order to uh, receive a grant from the city. I had a couple of exclusions that I proposed to you. One of, uh, one of them would be to exclude high volume fast food drive through restaurants. It's been um, a staff's collective observation that these facilities have been doing pretty well. They're definitely not experiencing the same level of uh, difficulty as, as the other restaurants. They're still able to perform relatively high levels of drive through service and uh, are able to again, sell a considerable amount of food and are not being as negatively impacted. We also have, an ex have excluded the two mobile food trucks that uh, we have in the community that were in the business license listing, and we have excluded establishments that have yet to open at the time of adoption of the program, of which there were two of those facilities who had obtained business licenses but have not officially started doing business yet. Staff uh, feels the urgency and uh, we're prepared to get going on this work immediately. If the council is uh, to adopt the program tonight, we would uh, be setting up a project webpage over the next two days and creating a fillable PDF application form. We would, uh, we've already got the lists of all the restaurants with contact information. We would start disseminating the information to the restaurant industry regarding the program. We would reach out to every single restaurant and make sure that they were uh, being communicated with and being informed of the opportunity to go to the city's website and fill out the information to be eligible to receive the grant. I'm proposing that the grant would run through the end of the calendar year. So uh, come January 1, we'd be closing this up. And uh, the goal is to distribute funds as quickly as possible, recognizing the holiday is here, and that's uh, often some of the most successful times for some of our some of our finer sit-down restaurants. The, the Christmas dinner is a, a big a big occasion in the restaurant industry. Uh, over the weekend, we discovered a couple of one-offs. The numbers that I produced in the staff report on Friday have been updated slightly. We've identified five additional facilities who appear to meet the eligibility criteria for a grant. Uh, there are two hotels that have restaurants within them, and then uh, the Family Fun Center has a restaurant within its uh, operation as well. And then I did was I used the um, standard industrial codes. 
and uh, sorted by food and dining to come up with the list of eligible restaurants. And within that, there are a couple of anomalies. We have a brewery, 95th Avenue Vanguard. They are, lo they are uh, actually identified in a, an industrial manufacturing category and not in the uh, 5,800 category of food and drink. So uh, we believe we've uncovered all of the one-offs uh, community-wide, and we've got a, a comprehensive list of all of those. So we feel the numbers are solid based on the business license listing review and the chamber review. However, that being said, there's always still the possibility for some minor adjustments. I'm gonna be expeditious tonight and just wrap it up with that. I'm happy to field any questions that you've got about the proposal that I prepared for your consideration tonight. And uh, that's all that I have, Mayor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Council, any questions for staff? How about, uh, are we, what do I want to say? Is it clear what is a, quote, high volume fast food restaurant? Is there something such as a non-high volume fast food restaurant? How, how close are we splitting things here? Yes, that's a good question, Mayor Knapp. There's one, uh, one anomaly that I would point out on the, the Exhibit B, which is an attachment to your resolution. Uh, there's one restaurant that has a drive-through window, but would not be considered fast food, and that's Cafe Yum on the north end of the city. If you recall when Cafe Yum came through the process, they have a large dining room, uh, first of all, so they, they do have a large dining room. It is a self-service facility, so if they didn't have the drive-through window, they would obviously be eligible for the smaller of the two grants and that they don't provide full wait staff. However, when it came to uh, determining their transportation impact, uh, they argued that they were slow fast food, and, and this isn't a joke. It's a, it's a, a, a category that exists out there, and, and working through our transportation consultants at DKS, we determined that on average it takes you about five to ten minutes to get your food out of the drive through line. It's not an expeditious experience in the drive through line. Uh, you have to be patient, you take your time, and when you get to the front, uh, it, it, takes, it takes considerable time to get the food from Cafe Yum. So uh, staff has made the recommendation that uh, that would not meet a, a, a Taco Bell or a Wendy's or a McDonald's equivalent of high volume fast food. Uh, those are the categories that uh, would be included. Carl's Jr., Burger King, McDonald's, looking at my list, uh, Sonic, Starbucks, Taco Bell, uh, the Human Bean Coffee Shop, uh, Panda Express is another quick one that you can get through pretty quickly. And then Wendy's, those are the, the fast food drive throughs So Cafe Yum would be considered the anomaly. They're the only one that I'm aware of that would have a window and wouldn't be in the, in the fast food drive through category. Okay, well, I'm pleased you've uh, thought about it in that much detail and, and tried to define it in ways that are defensible. And, and if someone asks that we've got a rationale, uh, it wasn't just haphazard. <laughs> yes, thank you. Other questions, uh, council for staff? Councilor Linville. Well, Your Honor, I just wanted to thank the council um, for um, allowing me to work on this project. I and I want to thank um, uh, Kevin um, O'Malley at the um, uh, for the executive director for the chamber. He um, he put in time uh, in kind of um, plotting through some of these ideas as well and. Um, it just did not take um, Mr. Namsu very long for for him to just pick this up and run with it. So I want to thank him for all of the work that he's done. Um, and I I, uh, I think we're uh, I'm very pleased that we're able to to streamline a process and just get the money out. It's never going to be enough for our um, restaurants to make them whole. Um, but maybe just a little bit right here at the end of the year that can help them get through till the beginning of next year when hopefully there might be some federal funding that would come through. So, thank you. And thank you for your work also, uh, Councillor, on this. I'm pleased to have it move forward uh, as well. Thanks to, to uh, Mr. Namsu. I was a little worried that we might not be able to move expeditiously with the personnel changeover we had. Uh, it's great to see that we're uh, 
we're on the ball and, and uh, trying to address the issue on a timely basis. So. Other questions? Uh, Councilor Lehan. So what else do we need to decide about this? It says placeholder, but uh, is this, are, are there, are there points in here that you're waiting for a decision, uh, uh, for a choice from us, or are we, are we just going to approve this and run with it? You're, you're approving the uh, recommendation that you just listened to, that uh, we will stand up the program and we will uh, communicate to the restaurants okay. in our community that the uh, grant is available, and then we will deliver that in a timely basis to the qualifying restaurants. Okay. Then, Your Honor, I would move to approve resolution number 2868. I'll second that. Thank you. Motion from Councilor Lehan, second by Councilor West. Uh, any other discussion you would like to have at this point? Councilor Ackerbaugh. I think we all um, had opportunity to make some comments during our work session um, when we discussed this item. So, um, and I appreciate that. Just to, to reiterate, um, I'm very supportive of this program and this attempt to provide some assistance. Um, I like the flexibility of what's being presented and um, the speed, the simplicity overall of the program. Um, and so I, I see that it could really benefit um, both the restaurants within our community and then hopefully in uh, results of that also our community members too that frequent those restaurants. Councilor Linville, does your dog have something that uh, he would like to say? <laughs> <laughs> You're muted. <laughs> so you don't hear what her dog has to say. <laughs> yeah. That's adorable. Muted her dog. Well, it's uh, it's clear, uh, Councilor Ackerwall, as you state that you know this is just going to be some assistance. We obviously are not going to be able to to uh, fix things for any of our restaurants. It is highly desirable in my view that we do is within the realm of council's capability to try to get through the winter, through the worst of this, hopefully COVID, to where weather eases up and people are more outside and able to eat maybe outside and uh, perhaps the economy will be coming back and perhaps there will be some additional level of assistance uh, than we've had from federal and state levels. So um, it's, it's a modest goal, but uh, I think that uh, doing what we can is important here in the local community. And, and I think this falls into that, that uh, realm, personally. <laughs> Councilor West. <laughs> Uh, I am really at awe and really proud of this council for being responsive. Um, people are really, really suffering, um, losing their jobs, everything they put into their business, they invest everything they have, and now they look at losing everything. And it's not because they did anything wrong, it's because we have to deal with this horrific pandemic. And um, I think that we have been thoughtful and mindful on how we approach this with tons of um, care and we've been responsive in a timely manner and Councilor Linville has been fantastic in her service and leadership on this issue and bringing really competent, ready to go ideas um, before us and put extra time in. And I know that not just the rest of this council, but the rest of this business community is really appreciative of that work. and. Um, it's tough right now. And, you know, we talk about, you know, I'm, I, I'm considered an essential employee as a nurse, so I, don't, I, don't, I have really good job security right now. But anybody who has a job and is about to lose it thinks their job's pretty essential. And a lot of people are really struggling. And um, I am glad that we can be leaders in Oregon on this as a small local government. We're Little Wilsonville City Council. And we arguably have done more for our communities directly to impact their lives in a positive way than a lot of other places have, could have. And I think we've shown leadership to the metro area and to the state of Oregon on what a responsive um, local government that 
knows their community the best how to interact and to take action and leadership. And I'm really, really proud of Mayor Knapp, Council President Ackerval, Councilor Lehan, and Councilor Lenville um, for helping this big lift happen. And I am very saddened, but also happy to vote for this uh, resolution tonight. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, uh, I will call for the vote on the motion to uh, approve resolution 2868. All in favor, please say aye and raise your hand. Aye. 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 We have five in favor. That is unanimous. Uh, so, Mr. Namsu, please do proceed as you have outlined. Thank you very much, Mayor Nab Council. I appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Uh, that then brings us to our uh, item move from consent, which was resolution 2863. Um, do we have anybody on staff to explain this a little bit or should I or what? Well, I, can, I can read it and then I can explain it. Well, there's no staff report, okay. Mayor. It's just uh, we've, we've done some cleanup to the language. Um, she can read the resolution, but um, we've, we've talked about it a couple work sessions ago and uh, we made some cleanup to some language that uh, you caught. So that's the extent of the staff report. Okay. So I'll just read into the record resolution number 2863, a resolution of the city council creating the Kitty Cotta Sister, uh, Sister City Advisory Board. And this was moved from consent because you have just appointed nine people to the board. The resolution initially, or the, yeah, the resolution and the bylaws initially envisioned a board and a beginning board of seven, but it's nine. So we just changed the term staggering. That's the only change. Yeah, those uh, those appointments have not been made, but uh, Councillor uh, Merrillek uh, Fitzgerald and I uh, have been reviewing it and we have uh, good applicants sufficient to fully fill out the board to nine members. And we intend to make those uh, recommendations to council for appointment next meeting. Anything else? I feel real uh, positive about this change. I think that uh, the testimony or the, uh, the interviews we've had with people that have been involved with the Kitakata Association uh, are uniformly supportive and are, are uh, eager to have the city uh, working with them in a more robust way and, and hopeful uh, that the uh, combined efforts can, can yield somewhat more robust of a program. Uh, perhaps with some elements that have not been uh, included here recently, uh, perhaps some uh, business and economic uh, elements uh, that might uh, interchange back and forth between Kitticott and Wilsonville. And so uh, the, the new board would need to be uh, working on that. Uh, city staff will have to be uh, working with uh, the uh, new board to figure out how to do some initial work like uh, uh, a mission statement, a st uh, short-term strategic plan, maybe a longer-term strategic plan, uh, <laughs> what is to be accomplished. And I'm fully excited that the, the uh, board that we'll have in place will be competent to do that with, uh, with that uh, uh, coordination with staff. So uh, I feel real good about this. <clears throat> If there's no other question or comment, I'll then uh, ask uh, council, what is your pleasure with regard to resolution 2863? Councilor Linville. Your Honor, I move approval of resolution number 2863. Thank you. Second. Second by Councilor Lehan. Thank you very much. So motion by Councilor Linville, second by Councilor Lehan. Uh, would you like any further discussion? Councilor Ackerval. I'll just quickly say, I know we're getting later tonight, but um, I look forward to seeing how this will will develop. Um, I have appreciated being involved um, 
with the Kitakata Exchange Program and hosting students um, over the last several years. And I see great value to such a program that expands um, perspectives of all ages and all um, types of people and life experiences. And um, I look forward to seeing the, the development of this um, in our study. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> Anybody else? If there's nobody further, I will call for the vote on the motion to uh, adopt resolution 2863. All in favor, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 I've got five positive votes. We are unanimous on that. Thank you very much. I also look forward to uh, seeing how this goes forward. I'm excited about it. Okay, we have no listed continuing business or public hearings. Does that remain true, Mr. Cosgrove? It does remain true. All right then, the next up is city manager's business. Very briefly, Mayor, uh, members of council, just a reminder that we have our DEI listening session tomorrow night from 6 to 8 p.m. If you have any questions, concerns, or if, any, if anything you wanna run by me, email or phone call. Um, wanted to just give a shout out to my public works and parks maintenance staff for the great job they do every year. It's a lot of work, but the community loves it. Uh, but tying that back into the DEI discussion, we have had some uh, comments, not necessarily complaints from, from folks in the community that uh, maybe don't necessarily share the whole Christmas tree um, theme. And what I've always said is that it's a celebration of holidays and that's why we do the lights on the, uh, the landscape strips and stuff, but we can do better. We will do better in the future. We wanna make sure that we're sensitive and, and inclusive uh, of the community that we serve. So as we go through that DEI discussion, maybe next year's uh, lighting will look a little bit different. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And lastly, I just wanna say I need to get this mask off because it's ripping my ears out of my head. So that's all I have. <laughs> Well, thank you. Uh, any legal business? Well, I actually, yeah, I actually had quite a bit, but I don't want the city manager to suffer any further, so I'll defer. Thank you. <laughs> okay, then, council, anything further for the good of the order? We're good for tonight. See you on the 21st. All right, that I'll sounds see good. You tomorrow, I thought. Oh, You'll see me, yes, I'll see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All much. right, I'll uh, declare us adjourned at 9.36 p.m. Thank you one and all Good night. for this special uh, video tonight. <laughs>